if you are dealing with a difficult person at work, I can guarantee you it is definitely one of these five difficult coworkers. Every workplace has one of these types of characters that I'm gonna tell you about in today's video. First, you're going to meet your difficult coworkers. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to deal with them and where to get more free information to do so. If that all sounds good to you, tap the like button, let's jump straight into it. The first difficult person that you might be working with is Chad. Now, of course, all the names I'm using are fictitious. Chad just as easily could be Brad or Tad or Matt. They're just suggestions that come to mind and give me a picture in my head about who this person is. However, I digress. Who is Chad and how can you spot him? Well, if you've been hanging out on my channel for a while, you have heard me talk about Chad before. Chad is just your stereotypical corporate bro. While he could potentially be really intelligent and really great at his job and really talented, chances are Chad has leaned into mediocrity because he doesn't have to really be exceptional. Everything's being handed to him anyways. And why wouldn't it be? Chad has lived a very privileged life and everything has been handed to him. From an Ivy League education, at an institution you would not be surprised to find out Chad's parents bribed his way into, Chad fits right in with the old boys club. The thing about Chad is, he's pretty likable. Maybe some of the girls in the office have a crush on Chad. Maybe they want to marry him. And a lot of the guys in the office really want to be like Chad. In fact, some of the leadership team really wants to be like Chad and that's why they grab gravitate towards him. And the leaders that don't want to be like Chad are Chad. And they love Chad because they remind them of themselves when they were younger. And validating Chad, promoting Chad, and giving Chad opportunities is really an act of self-validation because Chad's potential is their potential. And as much as I bug Chad around here and over on LinkedIn, Chad isn't really the problem. Typically, Chad is a nice guy. Okay, maybe sometimes he's a D-bag, but really he's He's just swimming with the current and the current is taking him to the places that he wants to go. While he can be pompous, undermining, and sometimes might take credit for your work, he's typically not doing any of that intentionally. He's just used to having all things attributed to his greatness. Doesn't make it less frustrating, but his bad intention usually isn't there. I can't say that for our next difficult coworker though. When it comes to difficult people at work, we need to talk about Patty. And I'm choosing Patty because Karen's have been picked on enough, but they're kind of the same person. Patty is all up in your business. I would say the source of 90% of the office gossip begins and ends with Patty. And whether she is digging to learn personal information about your life to turn around and gossip about and weaponize against you at work, or if it's just the knower of all professional secrets and what's about to go down at the company, Patty seems to have all the information, which would come in handy if Patty used her powers for good, but she probably isn't using her powers hours for good. In fact, Patty is probably intentionally hiding information from certain people and spreading certain information to other people, all in a great act of sabotage because Patty is entertained by the workplace conflict that ensues. And there's the side benefit of sabotaging your work, which she really doesn't mind because other people feeling makes her feel good about herself. And if there was ever a passive aggressive coworker, it is absolutely Patty. She'll omit you from the meeting invite, forget to send you that report, and accidentally tell on you to the boss. The upside of working with Patty is you know exactly who you're working with. She doesn't really hide the fact that she's a toxic coworker. She really owns it. But the next difficult person that you work with does just the opposite. In fact, you've probably been fooled by this difficult person at work more than one time. The fifth difficult person at work is a Rachel. Rachel is your frenemy. The thing about Rachel is she's really nice and she can be really helpful. And she's on your side and has your back most of the time. Rachel's the kind of person that you can turn to for career advice. And when she catches you crying in the bathroom when your boss yells at you, she's gonna comfort you and tell you what a jerk he is. But here's the thing about Rachel. You trust Rachel because Rachel has earned your trust. Until 
there's something in it for her. Whether it comes to throwing you under the bus to cover up an error that she made on a project or an assignment, making you look bad when you're up for a promotion that she also wants, or starting to unfairly criticize you to cover up for her own insecurities, or even using you for the contacts and the influence that you have, only to find a way to make you look bad in the process of her achievement. When there comes to be a moment that it's either you or her, Rachel's gonna choose herself over your friendship. And really, this is so many friends at work. And this is why I have a whole video about coworkers not being your friends. While I do think that honest and loyal friends do exist at work, I do think that they're exception rather than the rule. That said, having a frenemy isn't so bad because your frenemy, Rachel, just might push you to own your awesomeness, market yourself, and even put your name in for a promotion that you don't feel totally ready for, all in the name of healthy competition. The next difficult coworker we have is the one who is going to drive you the most crazy. We gotta talk about Nick. Nick is an ass kisser extraordinaire. There is nothing that Nick would not do in order to win the favor of your boss. Nick listens to all of the roles takes on every request that the boss has, is the first to defend unfair and outrageous policies that the company hands down. And if you break the rules, say something bad about your boss, or make a mistake that you don't want anyone to know about, Nick is gonna be the first one to tell on you. Because one of the ways that Nick tries to market himself and make himself look good is by making everyone around him look incompetent. Really underneath it all, Nick is really insecure, even though he's probably pretty capable of doing his job and doing it well. But he's not loved like Chad is. And he's not so personable as Rachel. And he doesn't really count himself as vicious as, say, a Patty. But no mistake, misstep, or secret is safe around Nick. And as annoying in ambition as Nick is, Nick isn't the worst when it comes to abrasive ambition. And that brings us to our fifth difficult character at work we need to talk about, and that's Avery. Avery is overly ambitious and extremely obvious about it. Avery sees you and every other coworker at your organization as a threat that they must destroy. If you do something exceptional and Avery was even in proximity overhearing, you bet your bottom dollar that Avery is taking credit for that work. Avery overstates their contributions and accomplishments on a regular basis. In fact, Avery is so deluded that they probably even believe that they did all of this work and that they actually accomplished all of those things, which would be much less annoying if they were just deluded. However, Avery is also the type of person that is going to actively and intentionally sabotage your work. They're going to withhold information or give you bad information. They're gonna to refuse to make introductions, refuse to contribute even when directed to do so by a manager. They're going to do everything to get in your way in order to make you look bad because it's the only hope that they have of making themselves look good. And really underneath it all, Avery probably has a lot of narcissistic coworker behaviors and a very fragile ego that lies underneath. Now, before we get into how to deal, I wanna know which of these you have worked with. Have you worked with Chad, Patty, Rachel, Nick, or Avery before? Or have you worked with all of them? Let me know in the comments down below. And real quick, let's talk about how to deal with these different difficult coworkers that you are going to encounter across your career. Well, first of all, we just need to accept that these personalities, these characters exist in every company. There is really no escape from them. However, now that you know who they are, you know the persona, it's gonna give you clues on how to deal with them. Now, the first things first, when any of these difficult coworkers does something to agitate you, to make you look bad, to quite frankly piss you off, the first thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that you do not react to them. That is exactly what all of these difficult people are looking for. 
We don't want to play into their game. We want to change the game. Now, if you want a deep dive on how to do that, make sure you're subscribed because my next video is exactly on this topic, how not to react to difficult people at work. However, you need to do more than just not react because when you're reacting and managing these different difficult people that you're working with, really what you're doing is you, as I just said, are playing their game. And if you want to be successful at work, if you really want to nullify all of these different difficult and even toxic coworkers, what you really need to do is focus on building your brand and your reputation at work. And the absolute foundation of that is uncovering your unique awesomeness quotient, your UAQ. This is honestly a game changer that so few people think about when it comes to their career success strategy. Now, if you don't know your UAQ or even where to look to find it, I actually have a UAQ starter kit that you can download. Follow the link down below and you can snatch it for free. The more that you focus on yourself, establishing your reputation and making sure that both your accomplishments and your potential are known, all of this workplace drama that we've been talking about really starts to fade into the background. And that's why I love talking about UAQ so much. That said, you still need to figure out how to work with these people because you need to have positive and productive relationships whenever possible, or at minimum, neutral relationships with the people that you're working with. Now, we just discussed five different personalities with all sorts of different toxic coworker behaviors involved. Now, depending on who you're facing, you really need to dive in to figure out how to deal with that particular person with that particular problem. So I've created an entire playlist of videos for you to help you work with the different types of difficult coworkers that you might have. You can go and check it out right here to start diving in. However, before you go, if this video helped you, if you enjoyed it, tap the like button, really helps my channel, makes you my favorite career bestie, win-win situation. As always, my friend, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.